we're going to be going from this setup where we kind of have level one configured to a more polished version where we have multiple levels set up. And this will be our final version here where the player is actually going to be playing and if you do collide with something such as one of these we will be printing out that the trash was hit. So this is a list of everything we're going to accomplish in this video. It's a couple unrelated smaller things but if you've been following along the series which I will link this playlist below this is kind of covering everything in a more generic way. This video currently that you're watching is gonna be a little bit more specific to this game itself. But let's get started with updating the player image and adding some rotation. Right now, if you look at the app, how we have it, you can see our player image, which is the water bottle right here. We wanna change this to be a different image and actually add rotation so that the, the box around it is more around the actual image itself and you'll see what i mean in a minute so i'm going to start by actually just uploading all the asset images that we're going to be using for the final versions here and most of these are already in here but let me go ahead and just drop these in and i'll replace them and this is good so really i only added two pictures which are the player and the trash bin so currently we're using this bottle image for the player and we're going to remove this and no longer use it. So if we just delete that. You'll now have an error where that is being called, which is within our player. And instead of using the bottle, we'll use the player. And so if we save this and rerun it, you actually need to stop it and then fully rerun it since we added those new assets. And you can see now our player is added, although the sizing of it is not correct. Within the player here, we're going to change the size of it to use our player width and height, which I believe we did already add in our constants, but let's make sure that that's there. Yes, the player width and height is set up, and this is set up so that it will match kind of the ratio here. You can see the width is about a third the height, which is essentially what our constants values are set to there. So instead of the size being 100 by 100, we'll change it to be the player width and height. Now you can see it looks good and we want it to be slightly angled instead of just being straight down. So to do that, we can actually just add an angle of 0.5. And now that looks pretty good. So this is looking more like how we want the final version to look. But there's another thing with the player that we wanna change and that's the position of it. So we want it to fall initially, but kind of hover right around here of the screen and then be able to play the game. So while all the obstacles are moving up, you can move the player and the player is actually always just going to be here and moving and then eventually we'll have this obstacle down here come up to the player. So let's make that change as well. So if we look in the update here, this is where we are actually having it fall. So this right here is what is allowing our player to fall because it's changing the position Y over the time period. And we do have this one check here to make sure that it doesn't go past the bottom. However, we can add another check above this that basically says don't go past the 25% of the height. And that's going to look like this. And it's just going to check if this new position is basically 25% of the game height. And then if it is, then we're just going to set it to that position there. So now the player will fall and it will just sit in this one position here and then we can avoid the obstacles as they come up. With that rotation, you can see now that our hitbox will be actually wrapping the bottle almost entirely where before there were big gaps on the outsides because it was a square within a image that was not quite square. So this is a way that you can keep things uh, using an angle, keep things uh, rotated correctly. We can go ahead and cross that off and move on to the next task, which is to make the bins obstacles. So right now we do have this bin object down here, and then we have our obstacles that are moving past. I did update the bin to actually fill out the space here, and before the image was not correct there. But these are good. We can look at the code now for our bin, and actually I'll just commit everything that is here. So we can look at our bin object here, which is a sprite component. And we're actually gonna have two types of bins. So we're gonna have the recycle bin, and then we're also going to have a trash bin. And this basically, we have already covered how to kind of make an abstract class and then have two different things. And that's exactly what we're doing with the obstacles. 
we have our obstacle, which is a sprite component, and then we have three different types of obstacles. So the bin is going to be kind of the same. And the main difference between the bin and the obstacles is that the bin is going to have a rectangular hitbox and the obstacles are going to have a circular hitbox. And that is basically just because of the way that the images are shaped. I'm just going to paste this in and then explain the differences. Okay, so this bin now will never actually be directly used, but we have the bin and then we're going to have, of course, our trash bin, which is just going to have that different image. And then it does have the on collision with the player. So if it does collide with the player, we'll just remove it. And that's actually the same thing with the bin recycle as the bin trash. The bin recycle is going to end up being kind of the win state. So this will be the win state set. And we'll do that later, but that is kind of what the difference is going to be here. And this will just be an end state that is basically saying that you went to the trash. What this is going to allow us to do is now that the recycle bin is an obstacle, is we can put it in our obstacle loop here and then allow the player to collide with the bin. So if we go back to our Go Green world, we're not going to add the bin here anymore. We're just going to remove it. And instead, we're going to add the bin or rather the recycle bin, the trash bin, and the recycle bin within our level data. I'll go ahead and do that first. If you go into the level data, there were a couple things we left commented out in the last video, which is the bin trash and bin recycle, because those were not yet obstacle types. And now that we have those, let me go ahead and add in exactly what our level one will look like which doesn't have too many changes actually the main thing that's going to be changing here is we have this last row which is going to have those two different bin types and that is good and the last thing though will be in our go green world since we're going to be from our level one returning this obstacle data class which is just a position and a type and these types are these four types here we have to handle these other two new types that we're adding in and if this is a little bit confusing, you can go back and look at the last video about building levels where this is covered in depth. But essentially all we need to do is handle these other two types, which we commented out last time, but we need to handle the type when it is a bin trash and then essentially just put a bin trash object there. And then the same thing with the bin recycle. And if we rerun this now, what we're going to see is we have our our obstacles here that we can move through and once we get to the bottom of our obstacle level we should see a full row of the two different types of trash bins and again the collisions are turned off but this is what we would want and then we would get into that trash bin i did not add a print statement but let me add a print statement here all right i added the print statement there so now if we hit the recycling bin we should get a printout that we hit the recycling bin which is good and later we will actually handle this with a ending of the game and moving on to a win state. So the bins are now obstacles so we can check that off and now we can add the levels one through four with a function to call it from the world. So the way that the game is going to be set up, which I wonder if it will work if I try and play it from here, the final version of the game is essentially going to have four different levels. The first four levels is basically we want it to look like this, but the first four levels are going to be hard coded. So what that means is for levels one through four, we're going to build out the exact layout of the levels. And the reason for this is we want the user to kind of gear up into the game and it to be very easy at the first level and then introduce them to new things in the game, such as the different obstacles. But then once they get to level five, the levels can just generate randomly. The same way that we're generating this level one list right here is exactly how we'll generate the rest of them. So we already have all the tools to generate these levels. We just need to create a object data list for the level and then add each of the rows into it. So I'm not gonna go step by step through how to do this. But... Okay, so as I was saying, water is introduced in level two. You can see we just are using the water obstacles and the trash obstacles, but it's essentially the same thing. And then the end of it is still going to just have that, that recycle bin obstacle. Uh, the same thing, level three, just fires in, introduced. So it's basically all the same thing. We're just having specific setups for each of these. So now that we have those four levels, we can create a function within our level data to get the level. So let me add that in here. And this is very simple. It's just a function 
that takes an integer, which will be that level number. And then depending on what number is passed in, we're going to return the level. Right now we only have one through four set up, but if we go back into our world here, where we are calling our level right here, which is level one, instead of calling level one, we can call that new get level and then pass it the level of one. So if we save this, nothing changes because level one is exactly the same. But now if we pass this level two and rerun it, you'll see we get a whole nother level with the water objects. And just to see what the other ones look like, you can do level three, which now has fire, water, and trash. And then finally level four, which is going to be just a harder version of this. And later we'll introduce actually a floating turtle object, but that's going to be for another video. So we have our four levels now completely set up and Right here, we also have a very easy way to determine which level to show. So let me commit this and let's go back to our list. So the next thing is to write out level five to be randomly generated. This is actually pretty simple to do. It's almost simpler than writing out all of these functions to generate it manually. So we just need to create a function that's going to generate kind of a random row obstacle. So we'll create that function, we'll call it random row obstacle, and we can add this right above our obstacle row. We do need to add the ability to use random. So that is from the math package, but we'll add that up here, which is just going to be random and then import it from Dart math. And let's go back to this new function. So this function is pretty simple, but actually very cool. So we already know we have rows and we know that we want to have at least one gap in each row. So what this is going to do is give us available objects that we can add to our row. And those are going to be the trash, the water, the fire, and the trash bin, and then also a blank space. So this is all of the, essentially the available obstacles that can go in any given row. And this doesn't count the, the win obstacle or the win, the blue can, because the blue can is what is going to always end the game and bring us on to the next level. So any of these can randomly be positioned, but we want to make sure that we have a, a blank value in every row. So we're going to start off by creating a list with a blank space in it. And how this function will be used is we'll just call this to get a whole row. So each time we call this, we're just going to be getting one row. So we know by setting the result with a null value to start that we're always going to have null in the row. And then we can just add the last four values because again, we set this up so that each row is only ever going to have five values. So now we just need to fill in those other four values with the random items. And those other four values can be any of these five items up here, which does include another null. So it is possible that we get, you know, all five values are just null. And then in that case, it would just be an extra blank row. And then once we have those five values in our list, we're just going to shuffle the list so that the null value isn't always the first one. It will mix them up a little bit. And then that is it. We'll just return that result. So it's pretty simple, but also very powerful because of the way that we set this up. So now we can create our level five, which will make use of this function. But we also need to add in that bin recycle so that we do have that win state. All right, so I added this in. So now let me kind of go through this code a little bit. So it's the same as how we build a level for the other four levels. We just start with a level that is going to return that list of object data. And now we're going to randomly generate the rows. And because of the way we have our game height set up, we essentially can have 14 total rows. So we're going to go through the first 13 rows and just get those randomly generated items and position those in the obstacle row that we want to create for each of the 14. After that, we're going to put the recycle bin in the final row at a random spot. For this, we'll just get a random number between one and five. And then whichever item that number relates to, we're just going to add the bin recycle. So this level is definitely going to be harder because there's only ever going to be one recycling bin. Once you pass it, you're going to have to basically play the whole level again because it's just going to loop. And that's it. You return the level. So now we have level five. So we can go back up to the top here and uncomment this. And now we can go to our game world. And if we pass in level five 
and save this and rerun. You'll see we get this version of it, and if we rerun it again, we'll get a new version of it. And if we just keep rerunning this, you'll see the obstacles are always just randomly generated. If you do that this playthrough, you'll notice that the 14th row is going to contain a recycle bin. And let's go ahead and check that off. So now we just want to change the background color. And it's yellow right now, and we just want to make that white. So if we actually just search where we are setting things to yellow, we have the scaffold background color, which is going to be the top and bottom bars. So if we set that to white, that is good. And then, of course, our background color of our game is yellow, so we can set that to white as well. And now the game is just going to have a white background, which is exactly what the final version will have. So that was a easy one. We can commit this and turn that off. And then lastly, we can turn on the collision detection. This is actually already happening correctly for our trash bins. I'm actually realizing now that there's a bit of an error here. So as I said before, we wanted these trash bins to be have square hitboxes because this is kind of subtle, but if you hit the corner of it, it's actually not going to register. What we can do is update our obstacle to have two different types of hitboxes and take it as a parameter. So our obstacle can take a parameter called circular hitbox, which is going to default to false. So by default, the hitbox will be a square. And then within our obstacle trash, obstacle water, and obstacle fire, we can set the, the circle hitbox to true. Because these we do want to be true because they're essentially circular images. And where we are setting, setting this circular hitbox here, we're just going to remove that and instead use a quick if else statement to check what this parameter is. So if the circular hitbox is true, then we'll use circular. If not, we'll use rectangular. And if we update this, they're all going to be rectangular now. So you can see it's actually very hard to see in the debug mode because the hitbox and the position are the same. But you'll notice those circles are gone because the whole thing is a hitbox. And if you just hit the corner now, it will, it will be removed. So that's what we want for the, the bins. But now for the other three obstacles, we will need to pass in circular hitbox of true. All right, and if we rerun now, again, it's, it's difficult to see. Let me actually change the color of the game to black. So you can see the yellow circular hitbox is there. And on the, on the bin, it is the whole square. So the whole thing is the hitbox. This, uh, this is good. We do, we do need to do this for the game. And then the last thing is, of course, to to set that on collision for these. So as I said, the bins on collision is here. We can kind of just copy this over and paste it into here. We are going to essentially do the same thing. If the player is hit, we will remove the player. And then we can, for now, just print out what would happen. But this is that the, the trash object was hit. So this same thing will kind of happen for all of these. All right, so I updated all those on collisions. So now the game is actually kind of working. So if you do hit anything like the trash, you'll see it says trash was hit and the bottle is removed from the screen. So that is good. And actually the last thing on our list. So this video is now complete.